the Reverend Dr. Joanne Mercer, and welcome to our service today from the Anglican Parish of Twillingate on this amazing Feast of Pentecost. Thank you to Jerry for leading us in that beautiful hymn, Spirit of Life by Carolyn McDade. I'm so glad to have you with us, and I hope this time of worship will be fulfilling for you and will be a means of God's Spirit at work in you. Let us answer God's invitation to come to worship. As we come to God in prayer, let us open ourselves to the presence of the Spirit to bring to our souls the freshness of mercy and grace. Call to worship. In those days, says the Lord, in those days after Jesus rose from the dead, in those days when no one really knew what was going on or what was going to happen, in those days God exhaled the Holy Spirit. And when the disciples pushed out their fear and dancing flames heralded the arrival of something new, and the birth cry was the cries of many languages all understood, in those days the church was born out of fear and fire, with joy and awe, the church was born, our church, God's church. Let us worship God. Responsive prayer of confession and assurance. Can you bottle a breeze? Can you blow out a forest fire? Can you help but breathe? For those times we stifle your spirit, O oh God. For those times we ignore your whispers and shouts. For those times when we turn away from your wonders and miracles, forgive us. The breeze is loosed on the world. The fire is consumed. We breathe deeply, for indeed we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the scripture had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is the Lord, except by the Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God, who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the work of miracles. To another prophecy to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the one body is one and has many members, and all the body, the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34 and 35b. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creations. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living thing too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is the Leviathan, which you have made from the, the, for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touched the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May, this, may these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
Now, I'm sure some of you noticed today that our readings are not in the normal order we would have them in. Normally, our final reading before the sermon is our gospel reading. But today, that was our first reading. And our last reading that Jerry just read was from the book of Acts. Because today is the Feast of Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And while all of our readings today talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is that particular reading from the book of Acts that we associate with today's feast. The feast that we often call the birthday of the church. The day when the Holy Spirit came upon those disciples who were gathered and they were sent out miraculously into the streets to speak in languages that they had never spoken before so that they would be able to communicate to all the people who had gathered together in Jerusalem for the festival that day. And when people are confused as to what is happening, Peter talks to them. And he reminds them of the prophet Joel and his promise that the Spirit would come upon all people. That people would dream dreams and see visions. People, old people, young people, slaves, people you would never think of would all be able to do these things because God's Spirit was upon them. It's interesting we call this the, the birthday of the church. But it wasn't about building a building or even staying in a building. The birthday of the church is about that day when the Spirit came upon the disciples and they began to fully move into the mission of the church and to the telling of the good news, the sharing of the good news. When they were actually driven out of the space that they were gathered, and then we're going to be driven out into the whole world, the whole world to preach this good news, to speak in the ways they had never spoken before, to communicate with people they had never heard of before. Today, as we celebrate this great feast, Pentecost, and we remember how that spirit came upon the church and began the whole movement, the whole Jesus movement, as Archbishop Curry likes to call it. So we remember that day. I want us to remember that that, that is true for us as well. That just as the Holy Spirit came upon those disciples, gathered together and sent them out into the world, so the Holy Spirit is with us giving us new dreams, new visions, and sending us out in ways that we would never have expected. And so here we are, seeing new visions and speaking new languages. Who would have thought a few months ago that we would be doing worship this way, in front of a computer or an iPhone or a smartphone or a tablet or however you are speaking new languages like Facebook and Zoom and YouTube and upload and all those kinds of things. Yet here we are. The Spirit is still moving us, still nudging us out to, to learn new things, to speak new languages, to communicate to new people, and to dream new ways of being God's presence here, God's church. Because really, that's what the church is, the people gathered, whether we're gathered in a building or whether we're gathered around a screen. We are God's people, and we are reaching out in new ways. Who would have even imagined? We've just finished a Bible study where we have people not just from our congregation, not just uh, from our deanery or our diocese, but people right from St. John's to Vancouver Island. People gathered around God's word, making connections with people we could never have imagined making connections with, doing things we could never have imagined doing, and being God's people in ways that scare us probably as much as the Spirit scared those disciples in that first Pentecost. 
This coming Sunday, on June 7th, the whole deanery is going to gather electronically uh, to provide leadership for our services. Imagine all of the um, people from Gander, Gander Bay, the two uh, um, parishes on Fogo Island and here, participating together, organizing together, and streaming together a service. Something we could never have imagined. In this very different time, as we move into through the season of Pentecost, or as um, our Roman Catholic friends call it, ordinary time, I think God is calling us to do some extraordinary things. I am convinced that the Holy Spirit is with us, prompting us, pushing us <laughs> beyond where we're comfortable to still be God's people, to find new ways of being God's people, to find new dreams and new visions to cast so that God's dream of a kingdom, a realm of peace, and justice is possible. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon us, will continue to come upon us, will continue uh, to enliven our hearts, continue to give us daring and hope and possibility. Amen. Affirmation of Faith let us affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in God the Father. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Prayers of the people. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, Come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident in your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and oneness where there is division, sickness, and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit generous god you sent your holy spirit upon your messiah at the river jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room in your mercy fill us with your spirit hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever amen 
and the colic for today. God of wind and flame, send your life-giving spirit upon your people. Give fire to our words, strength to our witness, and boldness to our proclamation of your wondrous work in Christ, who, with you and the Spirit, lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Im Himmel so auf Erden. Pater nostro che es in Gemis, santificetur un nome in tuo. Non c'è quegno un cavui, da quegno un spirito e quegno un caso di bene. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We are our everything. Narini, Narini. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom your will be done. Wie im Himmel, so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Sans la gloire, et le désir. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we recognize that same Spirit drives us out into the world. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you new life. Amen. May the Spirit who sent the disciples out into the world make you courageous in the service of the Lord. Amen. And may the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every one of us. Strong and weak, women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. In the Easter season like no other. 
We have proclaimed God's mighty acts in new ways and have prayed and witnessed to the fact that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us. As part of God's church, I invite you to respond to the movement of the Spirit in this time and this place. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting God to be your guide? Will you dare to support each other and grow together in love? Will you dare to share your riches in common so that all may have enough? Will you dare to pray for each other? and to minister to each other in times of need. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? Together we say, by the Spirit's power, we will. Filled with the Spirit's power, let us go with the fire and peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Shit.